devastating array of firepower against targets on land or at sea anywhere in the world. Whether it's hunting submarines in the North Atlantic or protecting ground forces abroad, the aircraft carrier is an awesome fighting machine. Tonight, soar high with naval combat aircraft on wings. Grumman's mighty Tomcat is probably the world's top interceptor and was conceived in the late 1960s as a replacement for the F-4 Phantom in the fleet defense role with long-range radar and associated Phoenix missiles. The massive fighter can be accelerated from zero to 170 miles per hour in a mere two and a half seconds during a 200-foot catapult launch. It then climbs away with its variable geometry wings in the extended position for maximum range and endurance. With its wings swept, the Tomcat can reach Mach 2.34, and for its bulk, the fighter is remarkably agile. But the thing that makes the Tomcat unique is its primary armament of six Phoenix air-to-air -air missiles. These are very fast and can be launched against targets more than 100 miles distant, homing with the aid of their own active radar guidance to detonate with devastating effect. The missile's progress is monitored in the launch aircraft, whose radar is a key element in acquiring the targets and guiding the missiles on the first part of their flight. The Hughes AWG-9 is an immensely powerful and sophisticated radar with the ability to detect and track 24 possible targets, select the six most threatening, and then individually guide missiles against these six. The whole system relies on advanced digital computing, giving the Tomcat 300% more scanning volume and 50% greater acquisition range than contemporary fighters. The mix of airframe, radar system, and Phoenix missiles gives the Tomcat unprecedented opportunity to hack down hostile aircraft before they can launch their own attacks against the aircraft carriers forming the U.S. Navy's main striking strength. Another great advantage of the weapon system is its ability to detect and attack targets at all heights between sea level and 100,000 feet allowing the Tomcat to tackle anything from sea-skimming attacks to cruise missiles flying a high trajectory before the terminal dive onto the target. We have the capability to look down and shoot down and shoot down most effectively uh, with a very good probability of kill. It goes past that because it gives you the capability to stay at high altitudes. There's only one aircraft in the world today that has that capability, and that's the F-14 with the Phoenix missile. Yet the Tomcat is not limited to the long-range Phoenix, which can be replaced or mixed with Sparrow medium-range missiles, complemented by four short-range Sidewinder missiles. And for truly close engagements, there is the Vulcan Cannon, capable of spewing out 20 millimeter shells at the rate of 6,000 per minute. The impressive and substantial Tomcat is operated by a two-man crew. In the front seat is the pilot, and in the rear seat is the RIO, or Radar Intercept Officer. He has primary responsibility for the Tomcat's active and passive electronic systems. However, despite all the systems and automation, it is important not to forget that the full potential of the aircraft can only be exploited by the efficient working of this team. The advantage of not having to split yourself down the middle or whatever percentage you've got uh, when you're in a tactical environment. With two guys working on the solution, you're going to come out with the right answer more often than you are with one. That's all there is to it. It's that simple. It's a beautiful combination. And uh, I know in, in my past experience, there's uh, the first guy to see the other guy has a hell of an advantage. Because of the two men in the airplane, we can shoot those bombers at long range still have the short-range weapons to get in and visually engage the fighters, take care of them, and press on about our business. With its wings extended and carrying drop tanks, 
The Tomcat has a range in excess of 2,000 miles, which gives a useful combat patrol endurance at 250 miles from the parent carrier. Putting a massive 20-ton aircraft like the Tomcat down on the heaving, rolling deck of even the largest carrier is a job which quickens the pulse of even the most experienced aviator. You concentrate on the meatball, or landing aid system, ready for any glide path corrections. You never watch the deck until the hook bites, and the 50-ton pull of the wire brings you to a complete halt in two seconds. At night, or in bad weather, it's even tougher. From about 10 miles out, your approach is directed by the carrier's air traffic control center. As you get nearer, you search for the tiny patterns of light to set up your final descent. Gusts of wind can make the aircraft climb or drop. You have to make instant corrections or go around again. In the blackness, you have no points of reference. It's like driving down an endless tunnel until you suddenly hit the deck. It's a hard landing, however, it's, it's uh, nothing that puts you out or anything. Big thing is to catch the wire and come in and have a slider on the ship. Slider's a cheeseburger, by the way. Space on any carrier is limited, so a genuine dual-role aircraft is always an asset. Such a machine is the McDonnell Douglas FA-18A Hornet, which began to enter U.S. service in 1983 as a replacement for both the Phantom multi-role fighter and Corsair attack aircraft. The Hornet's basic design dates to the mid-1970s and the USAF's lightweight fighter competition won by the General Dynamics F-16. But the basic concept was then revised and enlarged to meet the Navy's air combat fighter requirement. The resulting Hornet is an immensely versatile machine, equally at home on a carrier deck or land runway. Two General Electric F404 afterburning turbofans provide sparkling performance and range, though outright speed is sacrificed to agility, acceleration, and beautiful handling. The Hornet has excellent radar and a very advanced cockpit for single pilot operation, and can be rapidly reconfigured for pure fighter and attack roles by computer software and mission equipment changes. As a fighter, the Hornet can carry six Sparrow or Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles as well as its internal Vulcan 20mm cannon. As an attacker, the Hornet can lift two Sidewinders and 17,000 pounds of assorted ordnance on nine hard points, but is generally happier with a load of about 10,000 pounds, including all types of guided bomb plus air-to-surface and anti-ship missiles. Carrier operations are extremely demanding of all aircraft in terms of structural strength and aerodynamics, and in both fields, the Hornet is exceptional. The aerodynamics also make the Hornet a formidable dogfighter, in which role the pilot is aided by the hands-on throttle and stick control system and the highly capable Hughes radar, which can look up and down and track 10 targets while displaying eight of them. The Hornet is now in widespread service with the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps, with several export sales also under its belt. 
and continued development is adding further to the capabilities of this already formidable warplane. The Vought F-8 Crusader is now only in limited service, but flew in 1955 as the world's first genuinely supersonic air superiority fighter. Powered by a Pratt and Whitney J-57 after-burning turbojet, the single-seat Crusader entered service in 1957 and soon proved itself an excellent and versatile warplane. Seen here is the retractable in-flight refueling probe, which significantly extended the Crusader's capabilities. The initial armament was a mix of four 20mm cannon and a pack of unguided rockets. But the Crusader's rapid development soon added Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. The aircraft also has a limited capability for air-to-surface missiles. The maximum external load is 5,000 pounds on two underwing hardpoints. And for the ground attack role, unguided weapons are the norm. These can include four 1,000-pound bombs or two 2,000-pound bombs, aimed through the standard gun sight for extremely accurate delivery in a shallow dive. As an alternative, a maximum of 24 5-inch Zuni unguided rockets can be carried in six launcher pods. The rockets have devastating impact against a variety of ground targets. Once the rockets have been fired, the pods can be jettisoned, so restoring the Crusader to the more agile role of air-to-air -air fighting. These landings show the characteristic variable incidence wing, which could be raised to provide additional lift while still allowing the pilot a clear view of the carrier deck, a 200-foot catapult launch. It then climbs away with its variable geometry wings in the extended position for maximum range and endurance. With its wings swept, the Tomcat can reach Mach 2.34, and for its bulk, the fighter is remarkably agile. But the thing that makes the Tomcat unique is devastating array of firepower against targets on land or at sea anywhere in the world. Whether it's hunting submarines in the North Atlantic or protecting ground forces abroad, the aircraft carrier is an awesome fighting machine. Tonight, soar high with naval combat aircraft on wings. Radar ...and associated Phoenix missiles. The massive fighter can be accelerated from zero to 170 miles per hour in a mere two and a half seconds during its primary armament of six Phoenix air-to-air -air missiles. These are very fast and can be launched against targets more than 100 miles distant, homing with the aid of their own active radar guidance to detonate with devastating effect. The missile's progress is monitored in the launch aircraft whose radar is a key element in acquiring the targets. Grumman's mighty Tomcat is probably the world's top interceptor and was conceived in the late 1960s as a replacement for the F-4 Phantom in the fleet defense role with long-range radar.